I'm uh, Jim Salzer. I'm uh, represent. I'm actually married to Representative Sioux Falls. Uh, I have a cabin over in Lake Posset, so I'm almost a neighbor. Uh, this part of the year. Uh, a few of the things that Mary makes this difficult because every time I make comments, the next time she incorporates it into her, into her presentation. So I have to find things that she didn't. Uh, no, one of the things is that we're basically throwing out our entire baseline for our educational standards. The ACP is being rewritten, the SAP is being rewritten. Uh, we're coming in with the new Common Core Smarter Balance uh, assessments. And so we're going to be teaching things that aren't on the current test, which obviously the scores are going to go down because someone has determined that what we were teaching was not uh, what we need to be teaching. Uh, Common Core was developed behind closed doors with no one, no public uh, input. Uh, we get a hard time in the House of Representatives if we have a caucus behind closed doors, but this whole thing was done behind closed doors. Uh, I guess one thing that uh, I would point out that Common Core is the standard. And when you start asking questions of the Department of Education and so on, if something comes under the smarter balance or the assessment, they will legitimately tell you that's not part of Common Core. You have to be very careful what question you ask them, or they'll just say, well, that's not part of Common Core, even though it's part of the uh, smarter balance. Uh, one of the items that falls under that is the data collection. Now. If you go to uh, Smarter Balance website, they just agreed to change their standard on the data collection and put it back to the states and rewrite that last week. So what people are doing and these things are helping because at least that has gotten their attention, that the states will be able to control what data goes out of the state. That's what they say. Now we have to wait and see what they come up with the standard. Um, Part of my education is uh, in computer science, uh, Unix manuals. Uh, I found where the cure for insomnia. Now I see we're going to cure insomnia for all the kids with all the technical reading that they get to do. Uh, I listened to uh, Jeff Bush speak uh, in early August in Chicago. And one of the things that uh, he told us was that many of you will disagree with me, which was the only thing I agreed with him on. I don't believe the standards are rigorous, like they keep telling us, and that they are not state-led. Uh, I think Mary covered that very adequately. Um, one of the things that really concerns me is the, what's coming. The next-gen science, you need to look at that. If you uh, believe in creation or intelligent design as opposed to evolution, evolution will be taught almost as though it's fact as opposed to theory. Um, and the man-made global warming, which is science based on poll rather than research, will be taught that man is creating global warming. Uh, there's a sex ed policy that's coming that uh, the, one of the major contributors to that, the content is Planned Parenthood. So, uh, yeah, I'm opposed to it with Jim. I was the deciding vote to pass his bill in the House as a freshman, so I'm going to keep working with him. And I'd just like to say one thing as well. I really appreciate Representative Stalzer's comments. Folks, it's, you know, the way this, you know, I've been in education all my life, and I know how this process works. You always start with the least controversial subject. You all, you, if you really want to make a big change, start with math. You know, the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, it's the same in Indonesia as it is in Indianapolis. You know, it's going to be the same. But, uh, and, and you, you start with the least controversial subjects. In, in fact, I'll tell you, if this had only been math initially, I might have said, well, I'm not going to get involved in that. But when they put English in there as well, that also kind of piqued my interest and got me going on this whole subject. Uh, and uh, and the and, and what Reverend Stalzer said is absolutely true. Uh, the reason I'm convinced the Department of Education is holding back the science standards and we're really not talking about it is that 
if they brought those science standards forward, there would be, you, I think we've got probably 100 people here in the room tonight, there'd be 200 people here. There'd be a lot more opposition if they were bringing these science standards forward, which are not in keeping uh, with, uh, with the, the ideas of a lot of people here in South Dakota. So I'm going to leave it at that. I agree 100%. It's not what's here right now. It's also what's coming, and we're not making it up. We know what those science standards are, and uh, they're not good for South Dakota. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to add one more thing before I pass it over here to uh, my good friend from, actually from Lake Norton, uh, wherever that is. <laughs> I put in the back, the Republican National Committee condemned Common Core in uh, April. And I put the uh, resolution back there on the back table if you want a copy of that. Um, when I pointed it out and handed it out to some of um, my colleagues in the uh, House of Representatives this weekend in Pierre, they were totally unaware that that had happened. So I want to make sure at least you can tell your local representative. You don't have to because the bird in the Barack, as we refer to him. <laughs> You like to go next? <laughs> One syllable. I, I, I want to thank you folks for coming out, and uh, I don't want to restate a lot of what's been stated. Um, my concerns are, are numerous, and the more I read on this, and the more I talk with folks, the more concerned I become. Incidentally, when I left, before this meeting, I exited the school that I've been subbing in for the last four weeks and the day, and I'll be there for the way it looks another three weeks. Um, I'm filling in for a lady who just had a baby. Um, probably last week, mid last week, a couple teachers were talking about the new standards and how four times three can be 11 as long as you can tell why. And after seeing the circles up here, <laughs> having two correct answers, but you have to pick the one that best represents the picture, I guess I'm understanding, <laughs> it's frightening, I'm understanding that all, all kinds of craziness is, is abounding in education. These teachers don't agree with, and I can't say all teachers, some teachers have they're all in on this because I think in a lot of cases they just are breathing a sigh of relief that it's not uh, what we had before and no job left behind. They view it as an opportunity to start anew. Uh, the funny thing is, I heard something here tonight, I think, when Mary was speaking, that I said a few weeks ago. I said, this appears to me to be outcome-based education reincarnate. Outcome-based education as I learned it, when I was going to high school, it was being implemented in certain schools. And what I can learn is that it meant all that mattered was that you ultimately got the grade. They, they said that if you got the grade, you were learning. And so one of the students from Aberdeen Central who was in the outcome-based education program said that the students came to understand that the first time they took a test, there was a multiple choice test, they could answer A, 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 A all the way down. And the next time they could answer all Bs, and the next time they could answer all Cs. And then they could figure out based on the, the answer keys that were given back, which one were which ones were Bs, and then all they had to do was memorize letters in order. They'd get 100 percent But they might miss one once in a while just to just to suggest that they were staying honest. But he said, we're not learning anything. You don't have to learn anything. And here's this, this lady who was, I believe, an ad, advocate for outcome-based education. Did you not say that? Yeah, the handsome lady. Yeah. Um, incidentally, I'm glad that picture's still up there because I think, I, I think, I, I think I'm more handsome and certainly probably more charming than that gentleman. <laughs> I would point out, I'm, I'm slightly con conflicted. Um, when the question was posed about how to answer the fill in the blank, 
as to what your mom does with reference to cleaning your room. <laughs> Normally I'd say, my mom eggs. She's sitting right there. <laughs> my mom is a former teacher. Um, she's a former English teacher, and she was, in my estimation, one of the best. Um, I've heard from a number of her students who have come home over Christmas break and so on and so forth, how well prepared they were because of what Mrs. Greenfield taught them in the classroom. Um, and I appreciate you being here um, as, as a constituent, as my mother, as my friend, and certainly as a trusted education leader. She taught for 37 years, if I'm not mistaken. Um, she doesn't show very much, but... Um, <clears throat> at any rate, I have a number. I have a number of things that, that have come to mind. Uh, but I want to share this with you. Because it comes from one of my most trusted English, or I'm sorry, one of my most trusted college professors. He didn't teach in an area of my major, but I had him for a number of years to be uh, very well read, inspirational. Uh, very well educated and in a constant quest for further knowledge and wisdom. He, te or he sent me an email on January 15th. And the first part of it was his, rep or his uh, response to an Aberdeen American News editorial. And I believe the first part of this ran in the Aberdeen paper. It says... The Aberdeen American News today featured a story noting that the State Department of Education expects a decline in standardized test scores as the state moves away from the step test toward common core testing. What you're probably not being told is that the reason for this is that the common core standards then themselves substitute incoherent edu battle for the much clearer content standards teachers of the pre no child left behind date. Uh, I think I misread that. Somewhere around incoherent edge babble, I got <laughs> off track. Um, but it substitutes different standards, standards that were still actually being being written. Um, as he as he went on to say, he he referenced a couple of different web links, and he said, look especially at the math standards. I guarantee a generation of math illiterates if this is the curriculum we follow. That was the point, I think. I heard from Representative Bolden, a, a trusted education leader, uh, somebody who'd been in education for a number of years, who said, this isn't the road we need to go down. And here was somebody who I very much trusted, who was writing to me and saying, we got issues. And I, it, it challenged me to look more into this. And the more I've looked into it, um, the more concerns I've, I've uh, come up with. And I think that it is important that we all continue to educate ourselves. I do wish that we could have heard some of the, uh, the uh, audio from the presentation tonight. But I know it's out there and, and it gives us something to maybe to go home and take a look at and continue to educate ourselves. Um, I think for now, since uh, Jim and Jim handed the microphone back and forth. I'm going to turn it over to Bert, and if I think of a couple other things that I'd like to say, um, I will do that. But let me tell you one last, one last thought. I've heard a number of times from education uh, leaders, administrators, classroom teachers, um, folks from the Department of Education up here, how the best it, or the best decisions are those made at the local level relative to education and what have you. And now I hear some people buying in that the best decisions can come out of Washington, D.C. And I don't think that that top-down, Soviet-style model for education is what we want. I think we want those decisions left in the hands of the locals, those, those most closely affected, I don't think we want our students' names in databases, and I don't think we want bureaucrats in Washington, D.C. and in Pier collecting data and maintaining uh, whatever data they, they collect in databases that can be shared and so on and so forth. So 
With that, uh, I'm going to turn it over to Bert. Thank you again, folks, for, for being here and for listening. And, and he will want the microphone back. <laughs> good to see you, Jim. Jim. And good to see some former legislators out here and uh, some uh, lobbyists and other people. Um, by the way, um, who is, uh, how many school board members are here? Would you please stand? Just want an idea here. Thank you. And how many teachers? Yeah, teacher, would you please stand? Thank you. Well, education uh, is very important to all of us. And uh, I forgot to ask, former teachers, would you please stand? Thank you. Before I get going here, I would, I would like the audience to know that I am neither a proponent or opponent of Common Core. I'm learning, as we all are learning, what's going on. Um, math and, and then the English uh, language, uh, those two are in Common Core. And uh, representative, and the way we're supposed to say it, the good representative from Canton, Representative Bowen brought a bill to the uh, Education Committee, of which I am on. And uh, I, was that HD 1204 or 1208? And, and uh, he needed, I think the vote was 8 to 7, and I was on the 8 to bring it to the floor. And uh, I thought it was important enough, and Mr. Bowen, Representative Bowen, did a good job presenting it to the committee that everyone could hear the uh, pluses and minuses of the Common Core. So I got it to the floor and, and it went on from there. As I said, I'm not an opponent or a proponent of Common Core. I do know this. Teachers, first of all, the most important asset we have is our students. And if you're a teacher, I just know that teachers will do what is necessary and right and teach in the right way no matter what the standards are. If anything is out of whack, as we would say, or wrong, or against our philosophy of conservatism, our teachers in our state know our students. So that's something to be aware of as we look at this common core thing. Our teachers will take care of those kids. They live in the area, you know, we're not California, we're not New York, we're South Dakotans. And they will teach so that student will get the right information and how to do it. Now, when you see that slide up here, 5 plus 1 and then there's 5 plus 2 is 7, 5 plus 1 is 6. Mary, I wish I could have seen that longer because I couldn't figure out which was the best. And, and, and I wish you'd bring it back up, but I, I don't know. But I was trying to figure out where it was coming from, and did anyone get it figured out what was the best answer? So, yeah. so anyway, no, that's fine, we can bring it up later, but it was very, very interesting. Um, I just want us to be aware that Teachers drive the education system no matter what kind of standards we have. And, and teachers are the important people in this whole equation. And I know some, some of the teachers and education uh, people did have input into the Common Core. I do know that they had public meetings, but it seemed to be that not a lot of people knew about it. But we have to be very careful what we do as a state as legislators, we have nothing to say with it. So I have to make up my mind which way I'm going to go on this common court. It's a tough decision. And it's a tough decision for you too. But I do know that our three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic, are still important in our state. And that's the bottom line. Reading, writing, arithmetic. 
And I don't know how you're... I'll tell you what, we got teachers in this state that will get them there. And they're good. So that's all I have to say. I want to thank you for being here tonight. And welcome to Lake Norton. This is a great place to live. Uh, the selection from The Blue Aside, is that the name of the book? Probably three or four weeks ago, I was at home on a Saturday morning, and I saw that a friend of mine had tagged me in a post on Facebook, and so I clicked over to it. And I started reading some direct quotes from that book. That one was mild. That one was that one was only about pedophilia. The explicit pornography wasn't put on the screen. It's unbelievable. Absolutely gross. It <clears throat> I'm embarrassed to think that Someday I might be substitute teaching in a classroom where that garbage, I mean pornography, is being read out loud, or even even being assigned for silent reading. Kids aren't supposed to read that kind of garbage. And it's part of the curriculum that's being crammed down our throats. Um, again, a number of, there are a number of, of thoughts that come to mind as I as I continue to Think about this, contemplate this, learn more about this. Um, but that one, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any stomach for it, do, your, do a little bit of research. Some of you have seen what's out there. Some of you may be curious. And I'm telling you, it's out there on the internet. Search it out and realize what they want your kids to be reading in a few short years. You know, that, uh, that's a good comment. In South Dakota, I, I can't imagine any teacher allowing such a thing in, or I just can't imagine that. And uh, I, I don't know, some states will do that probably, but I just cannot imagine that. Well, you, you, you may be right, but I would just think that our individual teachers who we hire in our state would not allow it. But they are bound to teach this common core curriculum. I, 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 I realize what you're saying, but I don't think any teacher in our state would teach that. You're lying. You're lying. I mean, you're what? You're willfully ignorant, sir. Thank you. I'm sorry. But I'm not, I'm not a opponent or a proponent, I'm just saying. That's the problem. You're not a proponent for it or against it, you're for it. That's the way it goes. Because you so obviously, from the information you got tonight. Well, it was very good information tonight. And that's how you formulate opinions. And I'm glad to be here. I have a girlfriend in Brandon Valley. Her son is in the 11th grade, um, or he's in 11th or 12th grade, but it is on his reading list. She wrote a letter to the teacher requesting that this book not be on his uh, reading list this year. He said that he would not be removing it from the class, but that he would give him something else to read. However, I read the excerpt, and I wanted to bark. So... Okay, that's it. Okay, guys, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What, what is possible that you can do as legislatures that we can keep our uh, Dakota step tests that we have now and uh, we keep our math standards that we have had in the past, which now is above the national average? I think you guys all know that. And, uh, yeah, yeah, we, we've done so well, um, and I know it's shoved down your throat, but my question is, uh, what can we do to keep what we have now? What, what, we, have, what we have now... <coughs> what, 
what we have now is the, the implemented, or the, a portion of Common Core already implemented. Uh, what we're, what you're asking, I think, is how can we go back to what we've had in the past? And, you know, that's what Representative Boland has tried to do. And he'll probably care. You know, he'll probably choose to speak more. Uh, if I, if I'm not mistaken, our own, our own curriculum that uh, meets whatever federal requirements is out there.